We're going to start simple and work our way up. Along the way, you'll see some of the things that make SwiftUI very simple and some that are less simple. Now, in uh, contentview.swift, if I make this window a little bit bigger, you're going to see the basic UI to represent one screen in our program. That's this part here. It has uh, only what? Total of one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code, including the uh, closing braces. It's not a lot of code, but it tells us a lot right there. First up, one screen of information, one view, is a struct in SwiftUI. This is not required. I'm sure you can try and make them class if you wanted to, uh, but it's struct in SwiftUI. All our UI conforms to the view protocol. There's no more massive class inheritance like they've had with UIKit. Next up, we have one property, a computed property called body. The body of the view, the thing it wants to try and show on the screen. And this thing returns some view, which is an opaque return type. It means one specific sort of view. We don't really care what it is. Inside there we have our actual uh, view, our layout, the word hello world as some text. Uh, and this is used for all kinds of text strings in SwiftUI, for example, uh, text like this or text navigation bars or buttons and similar in all sorts of ways, like alert title, for example, is, is text. There's also this padding method called attached to the text which tells SwiftUI we want some extra space around this text. Uh, now in SwiftUI we call these things modifiers because they modify the way the text looks or the text works. Now on the right of my window over here, this is the preview pane or the canvas in Xcode. And this will show us our layout as we work. And if you don't see this already, you wanna to go to the editor menu and choose canvas and You'll see by default, it's kind of paused, it's not doing anything. And this resume button here, you can press that or a very helpful shortcut is option command P to hit that resume button for you. And it'll build our code. It'll load a simulator, in this case it's the iPod Touch, and I'll show it exactly how it looks. Now I'm gonna choose uh, the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Nice big phone, that's the one I personally use. I, I preview that if possible. Let's zoom out a little bit. I make this whole area uh, smaller, it's very, very big by default. Okay, so that's our default layout here. So option command P resumes that layout. You have to do it a lot because it'll pause if you make mistakes and so forth. Option command P resumes, a really, really useful shortcut. Now you can see the default view for us here is hello world. And if we change that, it will adapt. So we could say, you know, for example, uh, goodbye world and boom on the right here is goodbye world straight away. Plus you can see there's a little purple box around it. That's the padding. If you removed the padding, then it would shrink down to the size of the exact text. There's no more padding around it anymore. Anyway, there's our padding. Now in our app, we want a list of items. You know, stack of pancakes, power muesli, whatever our menu items happens to be. And to do that, we're gonna use a new kind of view called a list. And I'm gonna say the list with hello world, then hello world, then hello world, and then end the list. That's our layout. And look how it's changed in the preview straight away. Immediately, this is like a UI table view in UIKit territory with three pieces of text, all saying hello world. And this is called a static list view, uh, three pieces of fixed data. So it interprets them as three rows in the list. Now in our app, we're gonna have a list of items that can be uh, ordered, uh, tapping one shows more information about the order and so forth. And this works just like UIKit. You want to choose pancakes and see more information about pancakes or choose Muesli and see a screen all about Muesli. And it works just like UIKit where we have a navigation control which will push and pop views. Now in, in, in UIKit, we'd call this thing a UA navigation, UI navigation controller. Uh, in SwiftUI, we call these things navigation view. And to get one of these things, we, we just wrap our list in a navigation view. So let's say, uh, navigation view, then our list, then end the navigation view, and boom. This big white space appears at the top. Now, that's intentional. It's there because that's a navigation bar ready to hold the title describing our screen. 
and we can describe title with another modifier. Now I already told you about the padding modifier, attach to text, add a bit of spacing around it. This is a new modifier to attach a title to our uh, navigation area, that white space up here at the top. And again, these things look like method calls, but they're more complex because they actually change what they apply to. And what this means is, for example, if you have some text and you say, hey, I want to um, apply a, a foreground color modifier to change its text color, you don't get some text back that happens to be red or blue or whatever. You actually get a different type back, a wholly different view type back with a foreground color modifier applied. In our case, we want to apply a modifier called navigation title to our list. So we'll say end of our list dot navigation title is menu. Boom, like that. You can see there it is in our preview straight away. And yes, this is attached to our list not to the navigation view itself. That's how it works in SwiftUI. And to be fair, that's how it worked in UIKit too. We'd have each of our view controllers would have a navigation title attached to it. As we pushed it onto the controller, it would show different titles as we go. It's not one title for every view in our entire program. That'd be just odd, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and try running the app now. So we'll press Command R, build and run the code and deploy it back in the, for me, iPhone 12 Pro Max simulator. It is currently not running. So let's go ahead and launch that now on uh, iOS 14.4, it looks like. Okay, it's having to think now. No pressure. Boom, there we go. So this works like a real app. We can scroll around, get a little inline title as you go up too far and pull down again, stretch it a little bit. It's real. Exactly like a normal uh, UI table view plus navigation controller would look. So as you can see, uh, if you're familiar with UI kit, which you hopefully are, we get this large title behavior by default. It knows this is how modern iOS looks. We get large titles just out of the box. Okay, so these static text things, they work great when you have fixed table cells. If you want exactly three hello worlds, that's fine. But in our case, we've got lots of menu items to load across many sections, like breakfast, mains, and so forth. And what you really want to do is load that data from JSON, our menu.json file, and then use that for our list items. And it turns out that's not so hard to do. First, we're gonna load our data. And if you remember I said helper.swift contains this little helper extension that decodes some kind of JSON from our app bundle, which is perfect for loading our menu. So we can add a new property to content view here. We can say content view has let menu equals bundle dot main dot decode an array of menu section dot self from menu dot json as a string like that. So go ahead and give me an array of menu sections from menu json. And now what we want to do is make our list not have static text like this, but instead go over the sections in our menu and it's done using a new view type called for each. And this loops over an item in an array and does something with it. So we'll say for each menu, open, text hello world, hello world, hello world, end the for each. Oops, there we go. Now, it's not going to compile. That's okay, I'll fix it in a second here. You see the opening brace here? and also here, they signify the start of a closure. This is not a control flow statement like if and a regular for or while or a do whatever. This is an opening of a trailing closure providing content for these things. And in a for each, SwiftUI is actually gonna say, okay, uh, here is one item from your menu array, one menu section. What do you want to do with it? So we've got to accept the section into our closure. So we have this array of many sections here, decoded from our menu, go over them all, give me each one as a variable called section in, boom, and then do something with it like that. And that almost works, but there's one last thing we've got to do. Because SwiftUI has to know how to identify every piece of data in our list. What makes each row unique. 
And this matters. So if we if we add a row or we remove a row, it knows exactly which one was added or removed because it knows what makes them all unique. So if we add an array of items and remove one, it can see which one was removed. If they all looked the same, if it couldn't identify them uniquely, removing one, it'd be like, well, is it the first one, last one, middle one? No idea. So we've got to tell it how to know which item is which. And if you open up uh, menu.swift, this is our menu section here and our menu items here. We're loading from uh, JSON data. And both of these things have an ID here and here, both as UUIDs, universally unique identifiers, things that are supposed to be guaranteed to be unique. And that's perfect for our use. Because every menu item in every section has a unique ID. So Swift UI knows exactly which one is which. Now we can tell Swift UI to use these identifiers by making the two types conform to a protocol called identifiable. It actually comes from Swift, not Swift UI, um, but it only has one requirement, which you must have a property called ID that makes it unique. And we do already have that. So we can say immediately, many section conforms to identifiable and menu item conforms to identifiable, like that. And now they both are uniquely identifiable by SwiftUI. So when we build our code now, it will work correctly. It knows how to identify each section uniquely. So I'll press Command R to build more our code. And you're now gonna see lots more Hello Worlds. You're gonna see 12 Hello Worlds because we have four menu sections in our array. It's uh, breakfast, mains, dessert, and drinks, for example. I think that's the four sections. And for each section, we make three Hello Worlds. So we have our complete uh, breakdown here of 12 Hello Worlds. So what's changed now is we have a dynamic list. It's not static anymore. How many items we load depends on how many items we have in our menu. So for each of our menu items, it'll execute this closure exactly once, passing in the current section, and then provide three text views for each section, giving 12 in total. Now, obviously we don't want that, we don't want 12 hello worlds, we want to know the section names, what's in this section. And so rather than saying hello world, hello world, hello world, we're gonna say text section dot name, like this. I press Option Command P to resume the preview on the right hand side in the canvas. And now you can see breakfast, mains, dessert, and drinks are now appearing correctly. So that's an improvement. That's our four sections loading correctly. So now let's add the items within the sections. Now, this is like another for each inside the first for each. So we've got a for each here. Inside it, after the section name, I'll say for each section dot items the items in that section, item in, oops, and then text item dot name. Okay, so now we have a mix of stuff. We have breakfast, then various breakfast items, full English, porridge, deluxe, then mains, then various mains items down to other oh, all mains, the all mains down here. So it's now mixing up the sections plus the items inside them. But at least we can see all our data, right? And that works. You can see there's breakfast and items and mains and items and so forth, but it's not really a standard way we like to do things. We wanna separate these things visually on the screen so we can see what's a section and what's an item in that section. And uh, SwiftUI actually gives us a special view type called section to make sections of your list of data. And what this means is we can replace our text of section name with a section using that for its header. This is a new section. That's my header, section name, breakfast, mains, uh, dessert, and drinks. And then the inner for each, this one here, the one with our menu items, that is then inside the section. So section, header, contents, and section. That's what we're gonna try and do and it'll understand we're grouping things together visually and try and make that look better. And so we're gonna say, here's our for each. Our section has a header of this text. 
Then end that, open a brace to start our section, place the for each inside that, and then end the section. Now I'm gonna get this left hand painted to make it easier to read. There we go, so you can see the ordering more clearly. And now look at the result. It's very clear header, items, header, items, and so forth. And these things work just like you expect in UI Kit with UI Table View. As you scroll around, they're gonna stay fixed and scroll like that. So it looks really, really nice out of the box. Now by default, we're getting UI Table View's plain style. We can customize that. We can say for our list, after nav title, before title, it's all fine. We can say dot list style, and I'm gonna use a grouped list style. Get a sort of grouping layout like this. And option command P to resume. Again, really helpful shortcut. Now we get a slightly different style, but much, much nicer for our purposes here. 